I want to introduce our next speaker, an amazing political leader from right here in Texas who is helping create a better world for kids like me. Julian Castro is the 16th Secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, where he works to make housing equal and accessible for all Americans and to protect LGBTQ people from discrimination. I know it will be a few years before I go off to college and get my first apartment, and even more until I buy a house one day. But it's great to know that because of the work Secretary Castro is doing, it'll be harder for people to discriminate against me because I'm transgender. He is truly making a brighter future for LGBTQ youth. Please join me in welcome, welcoming Secretary Castro to the stage. You and I. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. First of all, uh, thank you, Jazz, for that kind introduction and uh, for your moving remarks. Um, you know, I have a uh, daughter who's about to turn seven, and so uh, I know you're a rock star. I hope you don't, ma you don't mind if I have you sign my program. Take it back to my daughter, Karina. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, all the inspiring speakers and uh, the honorees and the youth ambassadors that I had a chance to meet. Where are they at this evening? I know we had some folks here from uh, California. Had a guy from Philadelphia. Had some folks from Texas, of course. Uh, I also, of course, want to thank the um, Human Rights Campaign for your advocacy, for your leadership, for the groundbreaking nature of your work, and for inviting me as well to this amazing event. You know, as we stand here, we've gathered really at a crucial moment, at a time when every American is asked to take a stand. Today, there are those who are striving to make our nation more progressive and more inclusive. And there are those who continue to cling to prejudice and to the oppression that belongs to the past. Too often today, we hear politicians preaching the language of bigotry, or we read about violence perpetrated against members of the LGBT community. We can see this clash playing out right here in the DFW community. Now, I'm from Texas, and uh, I've seen firsthand the spirit of compassion and of tolerance of this area. And yet, the Oak Lawn neighborhood in Dallas has also experienced more than a dozen hate crimes in the past few months alone. This push for full equality, it's not only a movement of the LGBT community. It's a movement for all Americans, for all human beings who believe in fairness and who believe in equality for all. So it really is an honor to be with you here tonight. We have so many folks in this room who over the years have been trailblazers, who have inspired so many others, folks who have made a mark in this march in ways big and small. You've been champions for equality. You've been right on the front lines of this fight. And because of you and so many others, our nation has made tremendous progress. And yet, today, in 2016, we know we have to keep working. Every day, too many young people across our nation still wake up 
feeling hopeless and alone, forced to live in fear simply because of who they are. And every day, you're there to offer them safety and acceptance and hope. Your work transforms lives and it empowers people like Hannah, a young woman from Atlanta who's triumphed over incredible adversity. Hannah was raised by an abusive mother who threatened to hurt her just because Hannah wasn't girly enough. One day, Hannah came home to find a police officer waiting at her bedroom door. She was told that she had to leave. Hannah's mom didn't want her in the house anymore because of her sexual orientation. So her parents handed her a $20 bill and they sent her on her way. Over the next three years, Hannah went from one homeless shelter to another. On many nights, she slept with a knife under her pillow because she feared for her safety. And on nights when she couldn't find room at a shelter, she often slept on the streets. Sometimes she woke up to maggots living in her hair. And Hannah wanted to work, but as you can imagine, it was hard to get past a job interview living in such conditions. So she sold drugs just to make a few dollars, and she thought about turning to prostitution when that didn't work out. But even in the midst of such hardship, Hannah showed extraordinary character and resolve, and she never gave up on herself. What she needed was someone to believe in her, to help her, and thankfully, she got that help from Lost and Found Youth. That's all right, you can give them an applause. Lost and Found Youth is a nonprofit that serves homeless LGBT youth and that's been honored by the HRC for its incredible work. The good folks at Lost and Found gave Hannah stable housing and a support system that told her that she was worthy of love and of respect. So she soon got a steady job with UPS. She developed a close group of friends and started saving for her own apartment. Steps, steps that helped her lay the foundation for a brighter future. Now, Hannah's story is an inspiring example, a testament to the unbreakable spirit of human beings and to the impact that you make each and every day. But, as you know better than I do, for every story like Hannah's, for every person who finds their way, there are too many others that we have yet to reach. Too many children taught to hate themselves by the intolerant and the ignorant. Too many children who take their own lives because of confusion and despair. And in the face of such persecution, LGBT Americans need the unwavering support of all of those who believe in full equality. And that's why I'm proud to serve under President Barack Obama. <laughs> President Obama has done more than any other person that sat in the Oval Office to bring full equality to our LGBT community. He repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. He's worked to expand protections for same-sex couples. And he's welcomed the first openly transgender staffer to the White House. In fact, the President has made LGBT rights one of this administration's greatest priorities. And as HUD Secretary, I have the privilege of helping to carry out that mission. We know that America faces a growing crisis in youth homelessness. We also know that as many as 40% of all homeless youth are gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. Think about that for a second. 
40%. So HUD partnered with the True Colors Fund and other federal agencies to support LGBT youth who have run away or been thrown out of their homes. Innocent folks like Hannah, who shouldn't be treated as outcasts. We also know that transgender Americans often encounter unfair obstacles when they seek help from homeless shelters. And to add to this injustice, HUD recently published, and to address this injustice, HUD recently published new guidance to ensure that people aren't turned away from shelters based on their gender identity or forced to endure conditions that degrade their dignity and their safety. In fact, since 2012, we've also required every program that, HUD receive, that receives HUD funding to make their services available to all Americans, regardless of their sexual orientation, their gender identity, or their marital status. And about 20 states have now passed local laws that prohibit both public and private parties from denying housing based on sexual orientation or gender identity. That is meaningful progress. And now, we have to keep working. More than half of all LGBT Americans still live in places that don't offer such rights. In the past, HUD has pressed for clearer protections for LGBT Americans under our federal housing law. I'm proud to say that we've, we're now enforcing the Fair Housing Act against landlords that discriminate against transgender Americans based on their gender identity. And following recent decisions, made by federal agencies and by courts around the nation, I have instructed my team to examine our authority to protect gay, lesbian, and bisexual Americans in the same manner. We will make clear that we won't stand on the sidelines while members of the LGBT community continue to suffer injustice. And that's because equality can't wait. Civil rights can't wait. Human rights can't wait, not in this country, not in the United States of America. One generation after another has fought for greater rights, for women, for workers, for communities of color. We're also the nation of Bayard Rust Rustin and of Ella Baker, of Harvey Milk and of Edith Windsor. And achieving equality for LGBT Americans is one of the most important movements of our time. Its victories have occurred in many places and in many forms. On the streets of Greenwich Village, outside of the Stonewall Inn. In the halls of government when Congress passed the Matthew Shepard Act. And on the steps of the Supreme Court when our nation declared that all Americans have the right to marry the person they love. And through the lens of our popular culture, where figures like Jazz and Bob Harper and Ellen DeGeneres have inspired millions. But many of the movement's victories haven't made the national news. They were everyday victories, achieved by folks like you. Young people who have overcome incredible odds and dedicated advocates in the middle of the fight for equality. Thank you for all that you've done and for all that I know you'll continue to do. I know that each person in this room will keep on fighting in state houses, in city halls, in boardrooms, and in the halls of Congress until the battle for full equality is finally won. Because while we live in a time of great conflict, we also live in a time of great hope. And I'm confident that many years from now, when future generations look back upon what we achieve, they'll view this moment as a time when love and understanding triumph over all of those who stood in their way. Thank you very much, and keep up the great work. <laughs>